Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins on a post-apocalyptic planet, devastated by a brutal virus. Although the virus can infect and spread to both men and women, it exclusively kills women. The epidemic has wreaked havoc all over the world, and scientists are working feverishly to find a cure. The female population is quickly falling month by month, threatening extinction. Governments around the world have launched a campaign, since women can get the virus from close contact with men. The women are transported to an isolated camp by the government, which promises to keep them safe, but there they are subjected to a series of grueling and painful experiments, in order to determine the true nature of the virus. As a result, the government makes considerable efforts to apprehend the women who have survived the virus. We witness a quarantined apartment inhabited by a man named William. At first sight, it appears to be any other flat, but it also houses his girlfriend, Eva. She is having a shower, removing what appears to be ash from her body. The virus arrived on Earth in the form of ash that appeared out of nowhere. Eva suspects she has been infected, and uses a kit to take a swab test to confirm. She has made it thus far because Will has kept her hidden from the authorities. He forbids her from going outside or using the phone. His tight control over her independence and movements has strained the couple's relationship, even though it is for her personal good. He observes a special forces squad outside their home, while they wait for the results. The team's mission is to search the residence for any living women. He immediately takes her to a room, and assists her in hiding in a hiding hole he has constructed under the bed. Later, the special forces team enters the house and searches it. Will is questioned about why he established the quarantine. He claims that the apartment was rented by his girlfriend and her friend, who died as a result of the illness. He insists that he methodically designed the quarantine to keep Eva's friend safe, yet she perished. When the crew queries him about Eva, he lies and claims that she has been gone since the virus hit. After a while, the team comes to the conclusion that there are no women in the house, and begins to depart. The sergeant pauses for a second, and admits that he knows Eva is present. He finds Eva's swab test on the table. Will examines the test and thinks Eva is contaminated. Knowing that sick women are subjected to heinous experiments, the sergeant chooses to let them enjoy her final days. Will is horrified, he has dedicated 400 days guarding Eva from the infection, but it is all over now. As a result, they decide to spend her final days in nature. She also wishes to escape the house, because the general solitude has driven her insane. The two quickly collect their belongings and depart. She wears men's glasses and covers her hair. They stop at a convenience store to purchase some food, and discover the store clerk and try to avoid him inside. Eva discovers that tampons are free, and when she attempts to use one, the store manager removes her cap. After such a long period, he is surprised to see a woman. Will pulls out his gun, and orders the store clerk to the ground. They pay him for the items they grabbed and depart. Will scolds Eva in the car for not being cautious, and putting her life in danger. The scene shifts back 400 days, when everything was normal. According to a news program, a rare comet is about to pass near Earth. Eva and her friend are in their rented apartment. Meanwhile, Will settles into this flat after years of courtship. It begins to snow outside one day, while the two are alone. They are perplexed at first, but later realize it is ash. Eva's pal returns home covered in ash, and attempts to speak, but grows dizzy and falls to the ground. Back to the present, Will and Eva are on their way to a motel to rest for the night. They notice some suspicious-looking men with rifles in one of the rooms. Eva remains in the car, while Will checks in. Soon, a man approaches the car, and invites Eva to have some fun. She shows him her gun, and he goes away. They then spend the night in a motel. She insists on eating one last breakfast at a cafe, before leaving for the woods the next day, and Will reluctantly agrees. They see the most recent news, which is that scientists have manufactured an artificial embryo. In recent studies, the fetus lived for up to one month. Many world leaders have hailed the discovery, stating that once a treatment for the virus is discovered, this may be the most likely method of repopulation. As a result, the federal government is offering a $2 million reward to whoever brings them a woman. While they wait for food, Eva plots the route they must travel to reach their goal on a map. Two sinister men enter the diner, while everyone is engrossed in the television. They are bounty hunters, but only target women. Eva suddenly begins bleeding from the ear, indicating that her death is imminent. Will notices this and rushes out of the diner, leaving the map on the table behind. Unfortunately, this attracts the hunters and his son's attention. The hunter assumes Will is with a lady, and after discovering the map on the table, they pursue the couple. Eva begins to hemorrhage in the car, which causes Will to panic, because it is the first stage of the infection cycle. In desperation, 
he begins reciting the entire cycle to her, which irritates her, she urges him to pull over, and rushes into the nearby bushes. As he continues, he becomes tired and begins to cry. She eventually returns, and the couple resumes their drive. They eventually come to a halt, and drive into the woods to reach their last target, a hidden waterfall. He is heartbroken at the idea of losing his life's love, but she attempts to be as cheerful as she can, anxious to make the most of their final moments together. Returning to the flashback to the first day of everything, they hurry her buddy to the hospital, but she is pronounced dead soon after. Will realizes while exploring the hospital that all of the patients are female. He slips into a room, and grabs two protective suits to protect himself and his wife from the virus, realizing that his wife's life may be in jeopardy. The two then flee through the rear door. They call Eva's father, a doctor, on their way home, who advises the couple to isolate themselves, which will does immediately. He starts securing the house with furniture, germ-resistant plastic, and other security measures. He is more serious and cautious than her when it comes to safety procedures. He spends the entire night heating water after discovering it is polluted. He also brings a lot of packaged meals, and installs ultraviolet lights throughout the house, which he claims kill microorganisms within three feet. He also wears a mask and keeps a safe distance from her to protect her. Authorities are certain that they could eradicate the virus in a matter of weeks, but the sickness continued to kill women for several months. Eventually, the government requests all women engage in medical facilities for the embryo project, which aims to repopulate the world. The government-controlled media attempts to portray prison facilities in a favorable light, but the internet quickly becomes inundated with conspiracy theories, involving horrific experimentation. As a result, Will refuses to hand over Eva to the government, and constructs the bed with the hidden compartment. Over the next six months, the couple grows increasingly irritated, as Will becomes more rigorous, and demands her to follow all of the preventative measures. He even prevents her from using the phone in fear of the government listening in. During the pandemic, she seeks company from a hidden online community of only women. Will tries to talk her out of using the forum again, but she refuses to listen, because the survivors engaging in the discussion are her sole source of support. The number of survivors in the chat continues to decline, giving her a sense of futility and hopelessness. Back to the present, they stroll for hours, while she continues to capture images with her camera. They create a fire and make camp at night, she wants to sleep with him, and requests him to undress her. Her chest is covered in duct tape to make her appear masculine. He seems cold and distant, and exits the tent. The couple resumes their trek the next day, as Eva continues to try to cheer Will up. He finally relaxes and decides to teach Eva how to shoot. During this, the hunter and his son enter the woods in a car. The two plan to kidnap Eva for the $2 million bounty. Soon, owing to the map, the two arrive at their location. Later that evening, Eva and Will go camping, and when they start making love, she has a seizure. He supports her head, and assists her in relaxing. She gets up early the next day, to fetch water from the river. During the hunt, the hunters discover the couple's tent. Will begins screaming at Eva to flee, and the two men threaten to kill him, and then bind up Will, waiting for Eva to return. As Eva approaches the tent, she notices the two unknown guys holding Will captive from a distance. She is finally discovered and pursued by the hunter. She begins to flee and finds refuge under a rock. The hunter attempts, but fails to locate her. He has no choice but to hold his captive in the hopes that Eva will return, and falls asleep after a few hours, and wakes his son to keep a watch. Eva later devises a fantastic scheme, and arrives in the tent absolutely naked. She seductively approaches the hunter's son, who is still heartbroken over his lover's death, and after not seeing a woman in over a year, is enchanted by her. Eva drags her palm across his face, and slams his head into a tree. The hunter awakens, and Will takes his gun. He shoots the hunter in the knee through the tent, and kills him. Will and Eva flee after that. Back in the past flashback, Eva's phone gets bombarded with missed calls from her father. This concerns her because they had opted against using the phone, for security reasons. She senses something is wrong, and insists on speaking with her father, but Will only consents to a video conference with the camera and microphone turned off. Her father, who is disturbed, tells how the government took her mother, despite being over 60 years old. He sobs and expresses his desire to see his daughter, but Will intervenes, and hangs up the phone, as an emotional Eva switches on the camera and microphone. As a result, she loses her cool and confronts him for keeping her separated. She threatens him with a gun and tells him to leave. She becomes increasingly suffocated in her flat with each passing day. Living in quarantine and witnessing millions of people perish is not the life she desired. She looks at a waterfall image on her laptop, 
and decides to go outside, since the image reminds her of calm love and freedom. She dons her protective suit, and runs to the roof, Will observes that it is snowing with ash outside, and instantly returns to Eva. He realizes she is not at home, and runs to the roof to stop her. However, before he can act, she rips off her suit and becomes infected with the virus. He sobs and collapses on the ground, understanding that everything he has worked for over a year has been shattered. Back to the present, Will and Eva keep trekking, until they reach the secret waterfall. They hug, aware that they only have a few minutes together. He kisses her, and she takes a photo, content to die happy and relieved after this final experience together. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.